Good evening and welcome to the regular school board meeting for January 14th, 2020. Our first order of business is oath of office. Sure. Uh, Director Anderson, would you like to go first? State of Minnesota and will discharge faithfully the duties of my office to the best of my judgment and ability. I, Todd Anderson, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota and will discharge faithfully the duties of my office to the best of my judgment and ability. Congratulations. Thank you. I, Mike Bukoszewski, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota and will discharge faithfully the duties of my office to the best of my judgment and ability. Thank you. I, Rose Chu, do solemnly swear, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota and will discharge faithfully the duties of my office to the best of my judgment and ability. Welcome to our new board member, Director Chu, and our returning members of Dr. Director Bojewski and Dr. Director Anderson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now we need an official roll call. Certainly. Uh, Director Chu. Here. Director <laughs> Shaw. Here. Director Johnson. Here. Treasurer Anderson. Here. Chair Goggins. Here. And Clerk Bojewski is here as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are there any agenda adjustments this evening? There aren't any agenda adjustments, Chair Goggins. Okay. Any announcements or comments? No. I do have one uh, announcement for the community. And this is being put on or hosted by our leadership and training group, um, who have done an excellent job of, of hosting community conversations before. This is called The Vibe. And it's an environment for you, not just as a parent, but also as an adult. It's unstuck series, moving from the mundane to the meaningful. Feeling stuck, overwhelmed, out of, uh, out of balance, for many of us, our life is filled with busyness, distractions, and breaking points that can drive us to feel stuck. During the Unstuck Discussion Series, the Vibe will explore principles to help us and find meaning again. And they have one on January 30th for Unstuck in My Vision, Dreams, and Future. Mm -hmm. February 27th, Unstuck in My Family. March 26th, Unstuck in My Inner Circle. April 30th, Unstuck in My Finances, and May 21st, Unstuck in My Growth Plan. And these will be at the Fairview Community Center from 6 to 7.30. And there's a free dinner and child care activities provided in the community is welcome. So anybody pass that on, if you know of anybody who might be of interest, um, this will be a great opportunity. They're a really talented group of students in hosting these kinds of, of conversations. Is there any chance that uh, those could be, that could be, the dates could be put on the uh, website? Can we put this on the website? Sure. Wonderful. Good suggestion. Thank you. Um, next business we have is the organization of the school board. This is uh, by law. It needs to occur in the first meeting of January. And um, we will begin uh, with uh, the, um, let's see here, the affirmation of school board policies. We have a number of policies in the 200 series. Um, that we annually look at and affirm our commitment to. Is there anything you'd like to say, Dr. Sikora? Uh, no. Okay, is there a motion to... Um, is there a motion to uh, reaffirm the school board governance policies? So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 
Great. Um, that moves us to our, our next item under organization of the school board, and that is the election of chair. Um, statute uh, 123B.17 states that on the first Monday of January of each year, or as soon thereafter as practical, the board must meet and organize by selecting a chair, clerk, and treasurer who shall hold offices for one year and until their successors are selected and qualified. Um, so we'll begin with the office of chair. Are there any nominations for a chair? I would like to put in a nomination the name of Mike Bogoszewski as chair. Thank you. Are there any other nominations for the chair? Any other nominations for chair? May I ask for clarification? Certainly. Uh, could, could the current chair be nominated too? Um, yes, that is a possibility. Okay. Um, this is a one-year term, right? <laughs> It's a one-year term, uh -huh. and our norm has been to serve two years, mm -hmm. and I'm just completing my second year. Ah, got it. So I wasn't putting my name in. Anybody can nominate themselves. They can nominate okay. anyone else also. I should make that clear for you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so let's... You did it twice. You did it twice. Oh. You ask one more time. Any other nominations for chair? Okay. Um, so um, we have a we have one candidate. We wouldn't necessarily need to approve it, but I think following the standard procedure is always a good thing. So all in favor of Director Bogoshevsky serving as chair for two, 2020, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Okay. Then at this point, I turn the chair position over to me, Director Bogoshevsky. Thank you, Director Brown. Thank you, fellow board members. Um, I, I only say that I'll hope to do this as ably as my predecessors, who were just wonderful at it. So, uh, with that, we will move on to the. Thank you. We will move on to the next agenda item, which is the election of clerk. And uh, as with um, the chair. Uh, this is driven by Minnesota Statute 123B.14, and is again an office that's elected annually. So with that, I would uh, open uh, the meeting for nominations for clerk. I'd like to, no um, I'd like to nominate Todd Anderson for clerk. Todd Anderson has been nominated. Any other nominations for clerk? Any uh, further nominations for clerk? Any further nominations for clerk? Hearing none, then we will take the vote. This is the chair. Uh, all in favor of <coughs> electing Todd Anderson as clerk for the coming term, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Welcome, Clerk Anderson. Thank you. Uh, we will now move on to election of the treasurer. Uh, open the floor for nominations for treasurer. I'd like to nominate Kitty Goggins for treasurer. Thank you. Any other nominations for treasurer? Any other nominations for treasurer? Any other nominations for treasurer? Thank you, Director Johnson. With that, we'll close nominations. And similarly, uh, we'll take a vote. All in favor of Kitty Goggins for, as treasurer for the board for the coming term, say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Passes. Thank you. Welcome, Treasurer Goggins. With that, move on to the uh, consent agenda. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda, accepting the gifts. This is our common practice. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent agenda has passed. I believe, Director Shaw, you're reading gifts this I evening? I'm reading the beginning of the gifts. The beginning <laughs> of the gifts. <laughs> through the, uh, through through a lot of gifts, I'm reading Edgerton. through the end of the gifts to Edgerton Elementary School. So I'd like to acknowledge a gift from Robert and Deborah Benzik of um, financial uh, resources to support a field trip at Rim Hall Elementary School. A gift of financial resources uh, 
from Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation, from Wells Fargo Your Cause, uh, for students in need to Central Park Elementary School, uh, a gift of financial resources by uh, John and Peggy Trever, um, for the Media Center at Central Park Elementary School, and a gift from DonorsChoose.org of books and literacy resources for classroom use at Central Park Elementary School. Uh, a gift of financial resources from the uh, E.D. Williams PTA to the E.D. Williams Elementary School for field trip, art supplies, playground equipment, and school, sto school store items. Um, a gift from Joan Phillips and uh, another from Tom White uh, for students in need at Edgerton Elementary School. Uh, a gift from salesforce.org and uh, so salesforce.org to Edgerton Elementary School for student enrichment. And finally, a gift to Edgerton Elementary School for Mighty Cause Charitable of financial resources for student enrichment. Thanks, Frank. Who's thank you. Pick I up will, the, will okay. okay. Over the rest. Uh, we'd like to thank Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation for a financial gift for school activities at Fairview Alternative High School. We'd like to thank Roseville Lutheran Church for a financial gift for the Meals and Wheels program at Fairview Community Center. We'd like to thank Art Lingo, the St. Anthony Park Chapter, for winter clothing items for students in need at Fairview Community Center. We'd like to thank St. Odelia Catholic Church for winter clothing items for students in need at Fairview Community Center. The MPX Group um, for envelopes for office use to be used at Fairview Community Center. I'd like to thank Diana uh, Seacon um, for a financial gift for a field trip at Falcon Heights Elementary School. Mary Manns, a financial gift for the classroom project at Parkview Center School. The Rosetown Auxiliary, a uh, financial gift for flexible seating at Parkview Center School. We'd like to thank the Parkview Center PTSA, a financial gift for classroom grants at Parkview Center School. The Minnesota Weapons Collectors, uh, a financial gift for the Roz uh, Trap Team at the Roseville Area High School. We want to thank the Roseville Area High School Girls Hockey Booster Club, a financial gift for additional coaches at Roseville Area High School. The Roseville High School Girls and Boys Soccer Booster Club, a financial gift for an additional coach at the Roseville Area High School. And we'd like to thank Premier Bank, a financial gift for um, um, helping out with some unpaid meal charges um, for Roseville Area Schools. We definitely want to thank the generosity um, and the contributions of our wonderful community. Definitely, yes. I think every meeting we're uh, impressed and humbled a bit by, uh, by what, what our community gives us. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Frank. Uh, with that, we'll move ahead. It looks like we have no reports or non-action items tonight, so we'll move into action items. And the first one is a discussion about flexible learning year application for Harambe Elementary School, and I believe Dr. Jennifer Luck is going to be leading us through this discussion. Thank Dr. Lake, how are you tonight? Thank you, Mr. Um, as you can see, I'm bringing forward the flexible learning application for Harambe Elementary School that's required by MDE. We last applied in the 2016-17 school year, and we're required to submit our application by March 1st, March 3rd, <coughs> March 6th of this school year. So we're bringing it to you at this time for your approval. As you know, Harambe Elementary School is a year-round community-focused school. Right. Any questions or comments for Dr. Lake from the board? Is there anything different this year than our application from the past? The application is very, very similar. I would add that Harami has been awarded a Turnaround Arts Grant mm -hmm. from the Kennedy Center just to amplify the richness of their offerings. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would like to move um, that we uh, approve the Flexible Learning Year application um, ha as it has been approved and presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank, Thank you, Dr. Light. Thank you. With that, we'll move into a couple of policy discussions that need action tonight. Uh, the first is policy 604, uh, curriculum development, a second reading, uh, being provided to us by Jake Von Ms. Von how are you tonight? Thank you for having me. Uh, I did present this at the December board meeting. Um, we didn't identify any further changes at that time, so I would like to present this as the final policy 604. There's just a 
changes within that that we made to some cleaning up of the language. Great. Any questions or comments for Jake? I was just going to move uh, adoption of the policy as presented. Great. Second. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Moved and seconded. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Jake. Uh, the next action item is policy 612, uh, second reading of the homeschooling uh, policy, and our business director, Sherry Thompson, joining us. Ms. Thompson, how are you tonight? Good evening. Uh, so yes, this is part of our the annual or the administrative policy review. We uh, did bring this to you back at the December board meeting. Um, we have reviewed the policy. We don't have any changes from the previous uh, version. So we're bringing it back uh, this evening for approval. Great. Any initial questions or entertain a motion? I make a motion to uh, accept it. Thank you, Director Johnson. I second. Seconded. Any moved and seconded? Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of approving policy 612 as read in a second reading, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank Director you. Thompson. Um, with that, I think we're moving into board reports. So, uh, I don't know, anyone want to start? Any this end of the table? Anything you want to share with us tonight, Doug? Uh, real quickly, yes. Um, just uh, a quick AMSD um, reminder of the AMSD session preview coming up. I think I did mention at the last meeting, but um, it's just worth putting out there again. Friday, February 7th at the Quora Education Center. Um, usually one of our longer sessions because we have a, uh, there will usually be a legislative panel. Um, Senator Chuck Weger mm -hmm. is going to be one of the panelists, but from 7.30 until 10. Um, and we usually do invite you know, all of our area legislators. So that's if that's, um, so if that's, if that's this coming Friday morning. Friday, February seventh. Oh, Fe February seventh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, at the Cora Education Center, and then I did want to mention as well too. Last night I had an opportunity to, to attend the district curriculum advisory committee. Um, a really great uh, program. Uh, we had some presenters from the English language uh, program there uh, to tell the DCAC a little bit more about the program. Had a lot of good um, discussion and, and questions. We had a. Uh, a wonderful report on college and career readiness reports and Raider Career Pathways. Uh, Principal Hester uh, came on over and a lot of good questions and discussion. You can just really see that um, I, I don't know if a lot of the DCAC members knew about the Raider Career Pathways and what we were doing in college and career readiness, but just it really opened up some minds that uh, everything we're doing um, at the high school to prepare folks. So uh, that was a wonderful discussion, and that's all I have. Um, piggybacking off uh, MSD Association of Metropolitan School Districts, um, had a board meeting um, and a lot of really good things um, that was discussed, but the thing I, I will uh, pay particular attention to was a discussion on vaping. Um, and it, you know, in addition to the, um, all, all of the, all, all the science and all of the things that um, make vaping not a good thing. Um, and, and um, what was discussed was, you know, avenues to um, combat that, you know, from a school level. It's like, what can we do here? So it's one thing to go into a health class and say, shouldn't do vaping because it's bad. But the, one of the suggestions was to incorporate that message in, into multiple um, classes. So this, have this not just in health class, but in science class. Marketing in, in your marketing class, you know, show how people are marketing this to, to kids so that they hear it from different venues. So I found that uh, particularly interesting. Um, and um, of course, um, it's a new year, so that, that means I have to give a report on the um, Roseville Area High School competitive cheer team. So they um, won second place um, at the, their last competition. Um, which is the uh, Sweetheart Classic at uh, Edina High School. Go Raiders. That's all. Frank, anything? Yeah, I uh, did a, a PTA crawl last night, which is to say I started out at Edgerton <laughs> at the PTA meeting, and then I moved 
over to the PTA meeting at, um, at Central Park. And I might look as we do, as we do our um, committee's uh, assignments and or assignments of liaisons tonight, uh, I might uh, come off of not try to do both of those at the same time since their PTA meetings do uh, conflict with each other. But I was able I was able to make at least the second half of the Edgerton one uh, of, of the Central Park one, having done the first half of the Edgerton one. So at Edgerton, uh, they both were very interesting meetings. Um, we saw their maker space. So they have a, they've they've got a maker space that has been worked up as part of the media center and it's not like the spark lab they're not getting the students aren't getting um, stuff every week as they do at the spark lab at central park but they are getting it once a month or so through the media center um, and uh, it's full of very interesting things but in particular one of the um, sort of i don't want to call it a toy one of the one of the activities that they have there in the Makerspace is a is a board where marbles drop down the board and you can you can make the marbles go in particular directions to make patterns of it and there's a lot of ingenuity involved in in this and it's basically circuit design except it's done with with uh, ball bearings uh, under the force of gravity instead of electrons under the force of you know differential um, magnetism so you can actually see the current happening. And uh, I thought it was fascinating. Wow. I thought it was wonderful how we can pull back a little bit from technology and and accomplish the same the same things. And I'm seeing this um, throughout the elementary curriculum that uh, there's a little bit less technology, a little bit more um, mindfulness and use of pencils and papers. And uh, and it's a trend that I'm quite excited mm. about. Um, but on the other hand. Um, there was a group at the uh, at Edgerton. This is announced last night. Who were they? Were um, in their wind time, their what I need time. Were doing special projects with the, uh, at the media center. Uh, coding was that was the principal project. But one of the things they did is they applied for a uh, to. Uh, send a challenge or send a um, project in uh, and these are sixth graders mind uh, for the Samsung uh, solve for tomorrow um, program mm -hmm. wow. and they yeah. have done a uh, project uh, involving invasive species and uh, boat washes and they won in, 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 and mostly uh, these are middle schools and high schools that do this. Yeah. Very few elementary schools are in it, but they have won for the state. Wow. Wow. And they are now, and there's a, there's a substantial financial um, for payoff for this, and, uh, and it's, it's really extremely exciting, and this will be, we'll, we'll be hearing more from it. We probably yeah. should have them in to yep. show. They're going to be developing a three-minute video to then send out to, to the more international, so they're on. Not sure how many are at their level, but there are a few, and they cool. will then uh, compete at that level for the national. If they win the national, they go off to New York. Oh These are our oh, Edgerton sixth graders. Yeah. And it, it sounds like a fabulous project that they worked on. So that's good. That's um, we'll be hearing more from them. Uh, also, Jen Peterson was there uh, to tell, talk about the Roseville Area F Schools Foundation. And the uh, discussion item came up. It's really a uh, very interesting one. This also came up at the Central Park Elementary uh, PTA meeting at the differential budgets of the different PTAs. And the question then was whether there was some attempt to compensate for that through, because this is another sort of uh, funding uh, source, uh, through the... Um, Schools, Roosevelt Area Schools Foundation. And she said she'd take that back, and what we, we had really quite a uh, frank discussion about it. It's uh, interesting to talk about, and this, the same thing came up at the Central Park um, PTA uh, later. Uh, otherwise, both meetings um, full of interesting and interested people, and a lot of enthusiasm from the parents, as well as enthusiasm 
from the, from the staff. So it was good, a good a good set of a good evening of PTA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Kitty, um, anything to yes, share? Yes, please. Um, I had an op I got invited by the um, Painters and Glazers Union, um, who has been working in our buildings across the district, to come visit their facility because that's within our district. It's over just kind of east of Bryce, and they have an amazing facility with a huge warehouse-sized pilot plant, and um, they represent glazers, tapers, painters, sign creation, and trade shows uh, employees and. Um, they also expressed some interest in potentially f seeing if there were some ways to partner more with um, Roseville Area Schools, and I passed on the contact um, about uh, that possibility. I uh, had an opportunity to attend last week the Emmett Williams PTA. We also got to hear about the foundation, uh -huh, okay. but of course uh -huh. it's a school that has more means, so there that conversation did, wasn't quite the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got to also give an update, and um, what I shared was the role of the board, because mm -hmm. I've been finding that PTA, um, that's something they don't understand and, and, and have a uh, desire to understand. And then I also started talking about um, the financial situation of the district. We've been talking about wanting to do some financial education and that's actually part of the reason why I wanted to be treasurer is because um, I'd like to be actively involved in helping in the financial education of our community about this situation uh, in our district. Um, and that went well. Lots of good questions, lots of engagement. Um, then um, on f yesterday, I guess it was, I had an opportunity to go to the Emmett Williams All School Wide Assembly. And um, this was very interesting because um, they have a monthly assembly um, where every, all the students come and they kind of have an introduction to a book or a topic that they'll then read a book on and everybody in the school reads the book. And um, so far this year they've done uh, uh, a Latino one and a indigenous people and yesterday's was around autism and um, they had a video that kind of and that introduced and also they talked about how we each have a unique experience in the world based on how our senses perceive the world and and it was just really well done and then they had a kind of an experiential learning for the students they each got a bag and they had to with only the uh, sense of touch describe what was in the bag and trying to guess what it was while the kids guessed what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just trying to get people to think a little differently than we standardly do about our senses oh. and yeah. how other students will perceive things differently. It was very nicely done. Um, and then all of us, all six of us, had an opportunity to see the Roosevelt Area High School new um, science wing just before this meeting, but since nobody else was mentioned, I thought I'd mention it mm -hmm. uh, for the public because it is amazing. Um, it is an incredibly gorgeous facility with some wonderful resources for our students, and I just feel extremely fortunate that we're able to have that in our district. There, there will be a community, an opportunity for the yes. community to come in and see. Are you about to say that? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. There, well, no, I, I, I can't remember what the date is, but it's but sometime in March or April. It'll be March, March or April. April. We don't have a specific date. Yeah. Okay. 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 It is. Okay. Um, we are going to wait until the auto shop is. Is that correct? The auto shop will also be up we'll and be functional then. then? Mm -hmm. And that's why we're waiting until that time frame mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. okay. for the tour. Okay. I'm Thank assuming you. you have nothing to update. Yeah. Or, or, <laughs> or you <laughs> might, <laughs> Rose, yeah, you know, either <laughs> to share with us or with uh, folks who Community. might be watching us, or okay. we'll look at the at the tape of the meeting. So it's anything well, you I, feel worth I mean, sharing. I really enjoyed the visit uh, right before this. That was amazing. It was amazing to see. Um, kind of the progress because when I drive on 36 every day, right? Mm -hmm. And then you kind of see, finally you, you're inside and just just lovely, just really lovely. And I was just imagining all the students who have access to it. Love to, to know that the teachers are loving this. Um, and so it's, it's a great thing. I, 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 I almost thought about, oh, maybe I should go back to teaching. Just, just <laughs> thought, <laughs> momentary, I just thought maybe I should go back to teaching because it's just lovely. It's, lovely a facility so I can't wait to go back and visit more Great. yeah mm -hmm. um, the only thing I have to share is a bit wonky perhaps the MSBA Minnesota School Boards Association uh, has asked all of the school districts of Minnesota to consider uh, approving a resolution mm. that we support local control 
So in a way, it's kind of a resolution saying, you know, we love mom and apple pie, but I think they just want to have the numbers so that when they do their legislative lobbying this year, uh, they'll have the, the strength of being able to say a huge percentage of local districts still fiercely want local control. Mm. So uh, I'll send a copy of their wording to Michelle to get it on her agenda probably for the next meeting so we can discuss it and bring it up as a formal item to pass as a resolution of the board and okay. report that to MSBA. They just asked that if we did that, that we do it by February at some point. So, Madam, Madam Goggins. <laughs> <laughs> Director Goggins. <laughs> Madam X Chair. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot one thing to mention uh, to board members, um, that if you're going to MSBA this week, yeah. mm -hmm. on Thursday at 3.45, the leaders in training, the youth that are actually hosting those community conversations, et cetera, will be talking and sharing some elements of student voice. We'll talk a little bit more broadly how we're using student voice in the district, and then they will share some of their perspectives and their experience in education. And so I just <coughs> got a chance to see their presentation at when they did it with me in, uh, at the FREC conference in the fall. Um, and that was a bit cool. longer, but it was really excellent. And I'm sure you'd get a lot out of it. Okay. So yep. so and I think you, for that. you yourself are one of the facilitators or co-presenters, I think? Um, I just kind of do the introduction, Got the it. stage Thank setting you. about what we're doing as a district, and then they take the whole. Okay. Thank you. So and just for context, for those who don't know, uh, every year the Minnesota School Boards Association in January has a two and a half day leadership conference where all the school board members across the state are invited to come and gather mm -hmm. and hear presentations, have workshops, talk about things that are important to the school districts, etc. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think most if not all of us have gone at some point over the years and I know a number of us are attending yeah. this year also and that's later this week. So thank you. I guess Dr. yeah Chu. I guess I could mention that I will be trained tomorrow all day as a new director on um, the finance, um, the financial matters of um, being a board member. Great. So I'm actually excited about that. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> I'm very excited about that. So it's tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, if there's nothing else, that concludes the regular board meeting portion this evening. So uh, we'll adjourn for five or ten minutes. I think we have a photo we need to take, and then we'll reconvene as our study session uh, thereafter. Okay. Thank you.